It's Dave from Upgrade Your Home DIY. If you're gonna replace a light switch in your home, let me help you avoid eight common mistakes I've made and I see others make. Now, if you're changing an old light switch to a new Decora style light switch, that seems pretty simple. And even upgrading a light switch to maybe a dimmer or a smart switch, well, that's a little more complex, but it still seems pretty simple. So most DIYers jump right in. So let me share with you eight mistakes that I think you need to avoid making when you're changing that light switch in your home. The first mistake is not taking photos of the wires and the switch before you disconnect it. This is especially important with three-way and four-way switches. Take the cover plate off and then unscrew the switch and pull it out of the box. Now, use your smartphone and take photos of all the wires and the screws. Make sure that you can see in those photos the colors of the wires and the screws because it becomes really difficult when you try to remember where did that wire go, which screw was in which position. These photos are gonna help you make sure you can get the wires back on to the new switch in the correct spots. This is especially important for three-way or four-way switches because the wiring there is much more complex and you need to make sure you get the wires onto the correct screw terminals on that new switch. When you do take that old switch off, it's always a good idea to place it on the ground or the table, whatever you're using, in the same orientation that you took it off so that you can remember which direction it was and when you're referring back to those photos, it'll make more sense. The second mistake is not marking the wires in three and four way switches. See, often there are wires of the same color and if you don't mark them, you might get confused about where they went. So take some masking tape or painter's tape and mark each of the wires on a three or four way switch. So I'm gonna take a piece of tape here and I, I like a two letter system. The first letter is whether it's the top or the bottom of the switch. And the second is whether it's the left or the right of the switch. So I'm gonna mark this wire here, this red wire here, and because it's top right, I'm going to mark on the tape here first. I'm going to T R. Then I can put that tape on this wire here, just get that on the wire. And now I've marked it so I know where that wire was on the previous switch. So when I wire up the new switch, I have a better chance of getting the wires in the correct spot. The third mistake comes when you're working in a multi-gang box that has more than one switch. So you've turned the breaker off for the circuit you're gonna work on, that's great. But many times there are different circuits coming into that multi-gang box one circuit for each of those switches. And you need to make sure you test every wire in that box to make sure it's off, or else you could end up shorting something or touching a live wire. Use a non-contact voltage tester to make sure you go and test every wire in the box before you start working on the switch you're going to replace. Mistake four is not connecting a ground wire to the new switch. See, many old switches never had a ground wire screw. They just weren't built that way. But new switches do have a ground wire screw and they need a ground wire connected to it. So often, if you're dealing with a situation where only old switches were installed in the house, often what happened is, is that the electricians cut off the grounds short in the box because they didn't need them for the switches. But you're gonna have to run a pigtail from the existing ground, wherever it is in the box, to come out to be able to connect to that switch that you're now installing. So you can see in this light switch box, which is pretty common in homes where the switches they installed originally didn't have ground wires. These two ground wires coming into this box are cut off right at the screw. So I'm gonna have to add a pigtail. Fortunately, I have an extra ground screw here in the back. Now, if you're working with a plastic box, you might have the ground wires all coiled together at the back, so you would attach it into there. But I've got this grounding screw at the back of this metal box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach a pigtail, a short 
piece of wire to that screw so that I can attach the ground to this switch. So I have my piece of uh, wire here that I'm going to use. I'm going to unscrew this other screw here. And again, because I've bent this and I'm going to have it go up, I'm going to put it on the left side of the screw because that's the correct side so that the, the screw pulls it in when it's tightened. So I'm going to snake that in there. Tighten it up. So we make sure it's tight. And now the ground screw on this particular switch, I can push these wires back in. The ground screw on this switch is over on this side. So I'll go ahead and connect this wire to that ground screw. So now I've got my ground wire connected to the back of the box or the other grounds. I've got it connected to my switch. Now I can go ahead and put my switch in knowing that I've added the ground that wasn't there because I'm changing from an old switch. Mistake number five is using a J-hook to connect to the terminal screw instead of using back wiring. Many current switches allow you to use back wiring. So they have a little plate here that the terminal screw pushes against and allows you to put two wires in. So if you have a wire bringing the power into this box and then you have a wire taking the power out to another switch or an outlet, you can put both wires in and avoid using a pigtail in the box. And the way, this is the way we use back wiring on a switch. So I have my two black wires and I get them underneath the plate. Sometimes you have to shake the plate a bit to get it to come down or use your screwdriver or fingernail. There we go, the plate is out. So I'll put one of them in, I'll put my second one in, and then I tighten down the screw, making sure they both stay in there. I tighten down the screw making a good solid connection. And this is a much better connection than a J-hook. Because again, a J-hook, you could only fit one wire here and you would require to have a pigtail from the back of the box. This is much more convenient and a much better way to wire your switch. The sixth common mistake is using backstabbing or speed wiring. That's what these little holes are for in the back of a switch. Now. A lot of old switches had this and electricians have used them as a quick way to wire, but they're not really a great connection and I don't suggest you use them if they're on your switch. In fact, many new switches don't even have this option and instead have the back wiring, which we showed where the two wires can go under the plate and make a much better connection. So avoid the backstabbing or speed wiring that these holes suggest you can use but they're really not a good way to wire your switch. Don't make that mistake. Mistake seven is not properly connecting the stranded wires from a dimmer switch to the solid wire from the box. See, a stranded wire is difficult to connect with a wire nut unless you do it properly. First, start with the stranded wire and twist it so that all those strands are twisted together and you don't have any of those strands flying out. And then when you bring it to the solid wire, don't just place it beside. Actually wrap it around the solid wire and make sure that the stranded wire is slightly longer, slightly further out than the solid wire. Then when you go to put your wire nut on, twist it on, making sure you can feel that it's twisting and always pull test the stranded wire to make sure that it is solidly connected. Now, because this is sometimes a little difficult, one of the things I suggest you consider using instead of a wire nut is to use a WAGO connector. This is a WAGO connector. It allows you to open these levers 
And then the slots is where you put the wire. And it's especially good for connecting solid wire to stranded wire. So what we do is we take one of the wires, the stranded first, I'm gonna put that in fully in and close the lever. Pull test to make sure it's tight. Then I'll take my solid wire and I'll put that in the slot here, again, fully in, close it and pull it to make sure it's tight. Then I can always turn it over and you can see the connection bar in silver here and you can see both of the wires, the stranded wire from the dimmer, the solid wire from the box are both fully contacting that bar. So we know we've got a good connection between these two wires and we can now put this into the box knowing we have that solid connection. Wago connectors come in a two, three, and five slot version and the newer straight through version. I'll link in the description below to a variety pack that gives you some of all four of these common Wago connectors. And mistake number eight is not connecting the neutral wire when that's required on a smart switch or a dimmer switch. Now, most simple switches don't require neutral wires. That's why they're all connected together and in the back of the switch box. But some smart switches and dimmers do require that neutral wire in order to work properly. And you'll notice in their documentation, it says if you don't connect the neutral wire, the switch won't work at all. So what you're gonna have to do is to connect a pigtail from that connection of white wires at the back of the box and connect that to the white wire on the smart switch or the dimmer. This is where the five slot WAGO connector can really come in handy. Because often you have quite a number of white wires at the back of the box, this makes it easy to connect all of them and you can even connect that white wire from the smart switch or dimmer into that same connector and eliminate needing to have the pigtail altogether. Replacing a light switch can be a quick and easy way to upgrade your home. So avoid these eight mistakes when you start replacing light switches in your home. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I publish new videos. If you found the information in this video of value, here are some other videos I think you'll also find helpful. Thanks for watching.